Greetings and welcome to today's session. Today, basically, I'm going to handle sub ICT facilitation and way forward plus the tips on passing ICT this year 2024. So, our dear candidates, today I'm going to talk about what are the do's and don'ts while you are answering ICT paper one and ICT practical, either paper two or paper three. So I'm going to handle all the tips in this session. Yours is to get a pen and paper. You note down what you feel is important throughout this session. So I'm going to begin. So you need to ensure that you have completed the syllabus. That is both the serious part and the practical part. So you must have covered all these 15 topics so that you pass highly in paper one. Then when it comes to the practical paper, topic four, topic seven, topic nine, topic 10, topic 12, 13, 14. Those ones, they are the ones which form the practical part. So the, then the rest and all of them they appear in paper one. So when it comes to paper one, is that this paper has 20 equally weighed questions. They are compulsory, structured and semi-structured questions which require a short response. Each question carries five marks and paper one contributes 100%. So paper one is theory, then paper two is practical. So we are seeing that paper one carries two hours and 30 minutes. So when it comes to paper one, again, you must answer in the spaces provided. We don't expect you to ask for answer sheets. Then more to that, all questions are compulsory. I request you not to leave blank spaces. At least if you don't know a certain definition, a certain explanation, or a certain number, you don't know it very well, at least write something related to ICT, but don't leave blank spaces there. So, when it comes to the syllabus coverage, this is the distribution of the numbers. Introduction to computing, you will find two numbers. Then when it comes to computer lab care and maintenance, one number. Computer management, two numbers. When it comes to computer hardware, three numbers. Computer software, three numbers. Internet and World Wide Web, three numbers. When it comes to data communication and networking, two numbers. System security, ethical issues and emerging technologies, two numbers. Then that part of applications or the practical part, there are two questions in theory. Total, 20 numbers. So. As these questions are set, we set them according to Broom's taxonomy of setting questions. So you will find that we shall have the topic and where it belongs. For example, under introduction to computing, you will find one question on knowledge. You will find one question on application. Total two. When it comes to lab care, troubleshooting and maintenance, you will find one question of application, and that is it all. When it comes to file management, you will find two questions, one on comprehension, one on application, total two. When it comes to computer hardware, you will find one question on knowledge, one question on comprehension, and one question on analysis. Those ones become three. When it comes to computer software, one question on knowledge, one question on comprehension, one question on application, Total three. When it comes to internet and World Wide Web, you will find one question on comprehension, two questions on application. Total three. Data communication and networking, one question on knowledge, one question on comprehension. Total two. When it comes to that part of system security, ethical issues and emerging technologies, two questions, one on knowledge, and one on analysis, total two. So you will find that knowledge contributes 25% because of the five questions. Then you will find that comprehension contributes also 
uh, 25% because of the five questions. Then applications contribute 40% because there are eight questions. Then analysis contributes 10% because there are two questions. So we need to understand the question types very well. When we talk about knowledge questions, these knowledge questions, they are recurring for facts or we want you to give some basic concepts. So the question types, you expect questions like define, list, name, identify, state, or what is. Those are the knowledge questions. That's their category. When it comes to comprehension, here, we want you to explain ideas or concepts you are comprehending. So question types, ex expect questions like explain, summarize, interpret, compare or describe. When it comes to application number three, here we want you to use information in a new situation. Question types you expect like demonstrate, solve, use, calculate or apply. Those are the kind of questions under application. Then category number four, analysis question. Under analysis, we expect you to draw connections among ideas. So here, you need to, to ensure that you draw connections. Question types include analyze, differentiate, organize, relate, compare, or even contrast. That is under analysis. So I'm going to give examples on each of these question types. For example, under knowledge, the question is saying list the types of computer networks list two types of computer networks or list three types of computer networks another question can be saying what is the function of an operating system so these are the category of questions under knowledge when it comes to comprehension expect questions like explain how a cpu can process information or describe the difference between learn and one those are comprehension questions when it comes to application, here, expect questions like convert that to its decimal equivalent or demonstrate how a shopkeeper can use a spreadsheet in running a business. That is application. Under analysis, expect questions like compare the advantages of crowd storage with local storage or differentiate between transition loop and slide sorter facility. So these are questions under analysis. So if you get to understand the question types, that means that you should be good to answer your ICT theory paper. Now that you decided to do ICT, no going back and you made, you made the right choice. It is not a wrong choice to do ICT. That's why you see me creating for you such video clips, creating for you these video lessons, because personally, I love ICT. So, these are some of the important factors if you want to fail. One, laziness, failure to prepare, or no reading at all. Failure to understand what you want, unnecessary panicking, failure to follow the instructions, then lack of self-drive, or to whom it may concern, even taking things for granted. These are some of the factors that may contribute someone to fail. But we need to wash away these factors and be better people in ICT. So we say the paper one takes two hours and 30 minutes. How best can we plan for this? To begin with, you are seeing here, we are ticking. Eh? So take the first 20 minutes in interpreting questions and relating them to the topics. Then use 40 minutes in attempting and answering knowledge questions. Take the first 40 minutes in attempting and answering knowledge questions. Take 40 minutes in attempting and answering comprehension questions. 40 minutes. Take 40 minutes also in attempting and answering application and analysis questions. Then, more to that, take the last 10 minutes checking to ensure 
your work has all the i mean your work has all numbers answered and then you have not left any blank spaces so when you look at these animations of mine here you are interpreting questions and selecting them relating them to the topics here you are attempting knowledge questions attempting comprehension questions attempting analysis and application questions then here you are reviewing through you are checking through if you have not left any blank spaces and all the numbers have been attempted well that is the plan now after understanding the numbers very well you need to understand the questions too questions of sub ict are always direct we don't meander like in the new curriculum where we ask you a scenario then final a task but here sub ict questions are direct so when you find that the questions are direct also understand the questions and aim high too when you reach in the paper and you have found explain what is meant by the term computer hardware and you have met this hardware a day before towards your paper please bring the best definition that you have more to that every word in a question statement matters or counts so i request you that as you are reading these questions read them as you are breaking so that you understand every word in that question statement then you will find that some questions call for logic others need creativity and analytical skills while others need a lot of prior reading what do i mean here you will find that some questions are calling for creativity like they are asking you how can a shopkeeper use a spreadsheet in running the day-to-day -day business other questions they are calling uh, for logic maybe they have told you to calculate so you need to apply some logic and do calculations or we are saying others need a lot of prior reading for example that topic of system security ethical issues and emerging technologies you need to read that topic very well you need to read that topic of internet and world wide web very well so that you don't gamble around hmm? in that if you are asked what is meant by biometric devices you are able to explain you are able to explain virtual reality you are able to explain e-learning you are able to explain digital forensics that means that you need a lot of prior reading more to that let's explain our points well where it is required write as much as you can when they say explain but here we said answers of, of sub ict we need them in a short response we don't need you to explain like as if you are writing a history paper so for example here avoid very brief answers let points be explained but not just stated in abstract form for example here we have a question give ways how ict is used to improve education and instruction in your school avoid answers like for such using projectors etc such kind of answers they are correct but only if you are in primary four but remember the facilitation we are looking at today is for senior six candidates so avoid such kind of answer for such using projectors in your answer we expect to see the element of ict if you have said for such where is ict in your answer hmm? if you are talking about projectors we need you to be clear hmm? because we are seeing projectors in in cinemas we are seeing projectors in hospitals we are seeing projectors in disco halls we are seeing projectors in churches at school but here we are seeing we are we are saying give ways how ict is used to improve education and instruction in your school so better answers one ict can be used by students to carry out research using the internet so here the point is still the point is still research but then the it is internet so that's the element we wanted there also 
ICT can be used by teachers to enhance the use of visual aids using PowerPoint presentations. So imagine what I'm displaying now. I would put all this in Microsoft Word, but I've decided to put it in PowerPoint so that I can put these animations. I put these animations, these animations, so that I bring out the reasons for using PowerPoint. So meaning that if I'm projecting, this one is better. Instead of saying using projectors, you say ICT can be used by teachers to enhance the use of visual aids using PowerPoint projectors because these are visual aids. They can only run when you are using PowerPoint at best. Then always start with a leading keyword when defining, explaining computer terms or concepts. For example, you are looking at one, define a router. And we are, you are saying this is a network hardware device designed to receive, analyze, and move incoming packets to other networks. So when you say this is a network hardware device, the person marking you is not going to be bothered much in reading the rest of the words. We don't wait for candidates to fail. So when you begin with the leading keywords, you stand a chance of the examiner marking you at the start rather than reading the whole thing and find that it is wrong. So always start with leading keyword. So when you say, when we say what is data backup and you say, this is a copy of a computer file. So when you say this is a copy, is a leading keyword. Hmm? Define the term word wrap. This is a feature. Remember when you are starting word processing as a topic, you looked at different terminologies, you looked at features, and we have picked word wrap. You tell us that this is a feature of word processor that automatically moves the cursor to the next line when the current is finished. So at least put a leading keyword, copy, feature, network hardware device. Then footnote is a reference. So for example, if I've opened Microsoft Word and I have been asked what is what are table of contents, I will say this is a reference that provides an overview of your document, something like that. Then you are asked what is a caption. Hmm? You say this is a reference that enables one to label pictures or objects. So here we are saying always start with a leading keyword. Note that avoid repetition in your answers. We are saying state for uses of computers in a school like ours. And a candidate comes up and says, use it to print reports, use it to print exams, use it to print bank slips, use it to print reports. This is a repetition, please. If you have, if you are talking about printing, mention other points. Stop repeating yourself. The same applies here. State for uses of presentation software. Someone comes saying, when presenting in church, when presenting in class, when presenting in a seminar, when presenting in a worship. All this is repetition. Please write one point and bring others that are different from that first point or that second point. Don't repeat them. More to that, avoid writing non-official names of computer software or hardware. If you meet a question and the answer is supposed to be desktop computer, please don't write on a desktop. Go ahead and write the word desktop computer. If the answer was Microsoft Excel, don't write on Excel because there is Excel high school, there is Excel secondary school. Please, at, at best, you can write MS Excel because this one is recognized worldwide. So write MS Excel or Microsoft Excel. Same applies to PowerPoint. Don't write on a PowerPoint. Write MS PowerPoint or Microsoft PowerPoint. Avoid writing non-official names of software 
or computer hardware. Note that you need to get your facts right, especially when answering questions of true, false, yes, no. It is always a table given to you. So in order to answer that area very well, you need to have facts with you. You need to read different topics and understand them. For example, do software store data? Yes, someone would say that. So please, softwares don't store data. Hmm? What stores data are hardware devices, such as hard disks, flash disks. Hmm? You mention them. So here, does optical storage media store data in form of light? Yes, because optical storage media uses a concentrated laser beam of light to store data. Then, is there a data type called date of birth? Because some of you are used of seeing database tables, every now and again they are having that field, date of birth, date of birth. You may hurry in an exam and say, yes, it is a data type. No, please, the right data type is date stroke time. The next, are compilers and interpreters programming languages? Someone would say yes. Please, no, they are not programming languages, but instead they are called language translators or language processors. Then, is there a difference between CPU and system unit? Yes, there is a difference. CPU is the brain of the computer and it is found inside the system unit. The system unit is that, is that case that houses the internal parts of the computer. So here is the CPU. This is how the CPU looks like. So when we look at the CPU, basically, this is how the CPU looks like. It is as tiny as that. So this one is the system case. That one is the system case, or what you can call the system unit. System unit, system unit. CPU, 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 CPU. So the CPU is mounted on the motherboard inside the system unit. Then, more to that, is there a difference between a system unit and a system case? No. So, this one you can call it a system case or call it a system unit. So, there is no difference between a system unit and a system case. Then, hoarding of data and data storage. There is a difference. Remember, we are looking at getting our facts right. Hoarding of data is temporarily while data storage is permanent. So we need to get our facts right. More to that, avoid implied answers. Here, always give direct answers and avoid giving implied ones. For example, give two advantages of electronic spreadsheets over money ones. Avoid these kind of answers. Manual spreadsheets are not easy to update. Manual spreadsheets require more physical space for storage. Avoid such kind of answers. We need these better answers. Electronic spreadsheets can easily be updated. Electronic spreadsheets require minimal physical space for storage. Remember, the question asked for advantages of electronic spreadsheets, not disadvantages of manual worksheets. So, you have to give the advantages. Electronic spreadsheets can easily be updated. More to that, avoid jargons. I know you normally use these jargons in your communication over there. So, the question is saying, list two services offered by the internet. Avoid jargons like Facebooking, Whatsapping, emailing, using the internet. Please avoid Jargons. Please take note of whatever comes to the slide. Take note of that. You can pause and write down what you feel is important. More to that, 
avoid redundancy in your answers. For example, the question is saying define a computer virus. There are some students who are maybe they want to use complicated words while uh, defining or explaining. Please. Now this. This one says a malicious program that attaches itself to other computer programs replicates itself and that disorganizes the normal functioning of the computer. Why all this? Just be precise. Give a short response. This is a program that disorganizes the normal functioning of a computer. As simple as that. You don't need to be too wordy. Hmm? So that is, we are saying avoid redundancy in your answers. More to that, we are giving this other example. We are saying that, uh, for example, where we are saying give five negative implications of prolonged use of computers to one's health. Here, we expect you to bring your points as early as you are starting the answer. For example, wrist pain, back pain, eye strain, headache. Then from there, you can continue and explain, but bring your points as early as you can. More to that, assuming you are the head teacher of your school, give five reasons you would, you would recommend the directors to incorporate ICT requirements on the school budget. Please bring your points as soon as possible. Research, communication, storage, entertainment, speed and technology, etc. So that once, maybe if the explanation is not all that correct, but at least your point was immediate as you started writing. So avoid redundancy in your answers. Avoid mixing issues. So if they have asked you state four functions of electronic spreadsheet, please don't give advantages. Go ahead and give the real functions of electronic spreadsheet. If the question is talking about servicing and repair, please don't confuse the two. At best, if you know that you are going to confuse, you can give the activities that are involved under servicing and you give activities that are involved under repair. For example, one would say under servicing activities, we can do a software update, we can do uh, maybe installing an antivirus. Then someone under repair can say replacing the worn out parts. Hmm? So please avoid mixing issues. Internet. World Wide Web, Web Page, Website, Web Server. Please, I expect you to read in details that topic of Internet and World Wide Web so that you are not confusing and mixing issues. Color highlight and font color. You imagine that someone, if I write the name uh, Kakur Bernard, someone uh, may confuse text highlight and font color. So I have my two names. I've highlighted the first name. I come here. I put, for example, that one. I highlight this. I come here and choose that. So this one on top is a font color because this is the color of the text itself. Then color highlight is the background color of the text. So please. Don't confuse the two, color highlight and font color. Then find and replace with footnote or even someone reads the question poorly, footer and footnote. You find someone is mixing and confusing all these ones. Then note that some answers are only correct when there is a comparative aspect. When you are trying to compare that's when your answers are going to be correct. For example, state two advantages of soft copies over hard copies. Avoid answers like soft copies can be made into many copies. Soft copies can be shared among many people. We need to try to compare, bring that comparative aspect 
so that you earn the marks. Soft copies can easily be made into many copies than hard copies. Soft copies can easily be shared among many people than hard copies. So there you are trying to bring an element of comparison in your answers. So that means that they will be correct. There are what we call process questions. When it comes to process questions, these ones should be presented showing the real logical flow of steps. For instance, the machine cycle, which starts with fetching, decoding, executing, and storing. So here we are saying, please present these processes in their logical flow of steps. Information processing cycle, please bring those steps in their logical flow. Because if you bring a step, for example, you bring the coding under executing, we shall cross that one. We can only mark number one, which is in its position, and maybe number four, which is in its position. Then, some computer concepts require an example to be understood. What do I mean here? You give an example for clarity where applicable. For example, where we have concepts like local area network, metropolitan area network, one, etc. Give an example so that these concepts are understood better. Then another tip, questions requiring distinguishing or differentiating terms should give detailed descriptions of both terms for you to be awarded max allocated else no max will be awarded for example the question is saying distinguish between cold booting and warm booting as used in computing avoid answers like cold booting refers to starting a computer which has been previously off while warm booting is not please avoid such answers you need to define warm booting fully else zero max so you provide a better answer like cord booting refers to starting a computer which has been previously off while warm booting is the restarting of a computer that was previously powered on so please give both sides well detailed so that you get both marks note that avoid distinguishing terms by writing their abbreviations in full other than what they mean in computing for example distinguish between ram and rom avoid wrong answers like ram is random access memory rom is read only memory please avoid such kind of answers writing their full abbreviations no so you come up and say ram is non-volatile hmm? sorry you come up and say that ram is volatile meaning that it loses its content when power goes off rom is non-volatile it doesn't lose its content when power goes off one would also say that RAM is temporarily, while ROM is permanent. So please try to give those kind of distinctions, but don't write their abbreviations in full. Same applies to LAN and WAN. Don't say that LAN is a local area network, while WAN is a wide area network. Please avoid that. One would say that LAN covers a small geographical area such as a computer lab network or a school network while one is a network that covers a large geographical area such as a nation worldwide because one is the internet generally so we said you need to give examples so that they are clear then questions relating to practical concepts should be provided with answers as they would apply in practical situation for example 
functions and formulas should always start with equal signs. You are provided with a table and they are asking you how can we return the maximum value in this range. Make sure you put equal signs but not stated like this. Put equal signs, max, open brackets, A1, 2, B2, close brackets. So make sure you state it the way you normally write it in practicals. So here I've been giving tips and way forward to passing paper one. So all these were tips to passing paper one. The first tip we looked at avoid very brief answers. Then more to that, start with a reading keyword, avoid repetition. Avoid writing non-official names of softwares, computer hardware. Then you need to get facts so that questions of true, false, yes or no are well responded to. You need to avoid implied answers. You need to avoid jargons. You need to avoid redundancy in your answers. You need to avoid mixing issues and confusing them. Some answers are only correct when there is a comparative aspect. Then, process questions should be presented showing the real logical flow of steps. Then, more to that, some computer concepts require an example to be understood. Give an example for clarity. More to that, questions requiring distinguishing or differentiating terms should give detailed descriptions of both terms for you to be awarded max allocated, else no max. Then avoid distinguishing terms by writing their abbreviations in full other than what they mean in computing. Then finally, questions relating to practical concepts should be provided with answers as they would apply in practical situation. So those have been tips on the way forward to passing ICT. Please understand the questions and aim high. Then you need to plan accordingly. Take the first 20 minutes in interpreting questions and let them to the topics. Take the 40 minutes in attempting and answering knowledge questions. Take 40 minutes in attempting and answering comprehension questions. Then you need also to take 40 minutes in answering and attempting application and analysis questions. Take 10 minutes to check whether all numbers have been answered and there are no blank spaces left. So in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about paper two. We are going to be talking about paper two and its tips. So when it comes to uh, sub ICT paper two or paper three, this is the practical paper. And for it, it takes two hours. This paper is composed of five equally weighed optional practical questions that are derived from electronic word processing, spreadsheets, electronic publication, database, and electronic presentation. So a candidate is supposed to select only three questions. Where applicable, we give you support files so that they can supplement the questions. This paper contributes 60%. So, why do candidates normally fail practical? That is paper two or paper three. One, candidates normally have cyberphobia. That is the fear of computers. Some candidates have slow typing speed and they don't complete the given content in time. Some candidates use wrong applications to do tasks required for a particular application. Some candidates fail to, in, to interpret the questions. Some candidates are working to beatify work, leaving out the required skills. Some candidates fail to ban work on CD or others ban shortcuts. There is also failure 
to print work and then you submit an empty CD. All these are reasons why candidates fail. So we need to plan for this paper also so that we don't fail it. When you receive your question paper, take the first five minutes in interpreting questions and choosing the right applications and questions. So that here you avoid using wrong applications. So we are saying take five minutes interpreting questions and choosing the right applications and questions. So select those questions, the three you are going to do. Then more to that, use 35 minutes in attempting and answering your first choice question. Use 35 minutes again in attempting and answering your second choice question. Then use 35 minutes in attempting and answering your third choice question. Use the 10 minutes to produce the product. The product, you are burning work on CD, you are also printing your work on A4 paper. Soft copy on CD, hard copy on A4 papers. So, while handling practicals, that is sub ICT paper 2 or paper 3, we are looking out for a specific practical skill. Therefore, you need to concentrate on what has been asked first, which we normally call the score sheet. So this means that the decorations might be a waste of time. Don't go into too much decorations that have not been asked. You need to remember that every word in a question statement matters. Therefore, load or open or use the right support file that has been asked. You need to practice with drop caps. Hmm? Practice drop caps up to even five lines. Then a footer or watermark of your personal number. You need to print your work. You need to use asked file and object names. You need to use appropriate applications and charts. You need to put your work on CD and avoid handing in file shortcuts. Let's understand the principles in every software program and function. For example, when it comes to spreadsheets, you need to understand that spreadsheets, they work with organized data. So as a candidate, you need to understand and practice on the principles where and how does Excel add a row or a column. You need to understand function parts and conditions. For example, if we are using if, you need to understand the function parts and the condition there. When ranking, the reference remains constant. Why? Why do we put those dollar signs? Then more to that, whenever we are going to do a calculation, we start with equal signs. Why? As a candidate, you need to know all these things behind so that you can appreciate Excel and use it. Then more to that, take note of values, labels, functions. How do you add rows and columns? Why do we normally press F4? Hmm? How do you hide and unhide rows and columns? How do you freeze pens? Hmm? How do you rename your worksheets? Headers and footers, all these are the things you need to practice if you are ready to do an Excel number. Don't confuse charts. Sometimes we select non-adjacent columns and we get a wrong chart, we get a wrong uh, pie chart. Then you need to practice moving charts. How do you move them from data to their independent sheets? At least when you're going to do a number of Excel, make sure you know how to use count if, how to use rank, how to use VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, ETC. Make sure you practice with all those functions. More to that, when it comes to electronic databases, maybe before database, when I open Excel, I expect someone to have practiced. Hmm? How do I rename? For example, if I have my work, here I have, uh, say, names, I have BOT, I have 
uh, midterm and I have EOT then total then we are asked we have say names John we have Tom we have Alex then from there BOT 20 15 and this one is 18 then midterm let's say this one was out of 30 this one was out of 20 28 and uh, maybe uh, 22 and 27 then EOT was out of 50 this one scored 42 this one scored 38 and this one scored 46 then we are asked total equal signs sum open brackets we highlight this we add up this enter so here we have generated this so and you are told to create a graph of names names mid term and total go to insert column pick a graph then after generating it you are told to move it so go here move chart click here call it graph click ok so this kind of graph put the titles go to quick layout here under layout 9 put label hmm? a graph showing a graph showing names and max enter come here label you are x axis names press enter label you are y axis max all those are very important then you are told to change for example these ones into a line graph so click on those blue bars right click change series chart type then here under combo select here line graph okay something like that then renaming sheets right click here rename give it your names or call it computed it is from here that you have to put grids on your work so you highlight put their grids these are some of the things you need to practice with then from there if you are asked for example count if that we count how many are having 90 and above so one would say equal signs count if open brackets highlight this comma open quotes greater equal to 90 you close quotes close brackets enter so that's how we use count if in case you meet it what if you were told to use vlookup to grade maybe they want you to grade as follows we have maybe max then we have comment or remark that zero to 70 that is poor then that is uh, maybe 70 78 and above is good then 85 and above is excellent something like that you want to use vlookup so meanwhile before i use vlookup let me also first use if so we can use if to have a comment so comment we can say equal signs if open brackets if total mark is greater equal to 85 comma excellent cross quotes comma if open brackets if e2 is greater equal to 78 comma open quotes good cross quotes comma now the if is ending so we don't open another if just open quotes put poor cross quotes cross with the two brackets that you opened press enter so here you have calculated the comment others are in excellent others are poor so maybe we can add someone else who has at least maybe a score that is good that is the gen 
Jen maybe has 18, Jen scored 27, and also scored 48. So something like this, we can check out this. Oh, okay, 45, 42. Yes, so that we have someone in the middle. So I want us to get position. So for position, we shall say equal signs rank, open brackets. If totals, I mean we are using totals, equal signs rank, open brackets, E2, comma. We now highlight all the values in that range, comma. We say descending, so that whoever has the maximum value is ranked as the first. Close the brackets, then highlight your range and press F4 on your keyboard. It will be absolute. So you press enter. So click in your answer and autofill. The other function I wanted to talk about is by use of VLOOKUP to make remarks. So I have a column, remarks, and I want to use VLOOKUP that is here. So here I will come and say equal signs VLOOKUP, open brackets, click total mark, comma, then we come and highlight our range here. After that, put a comma, then you say column two. Column two is this one that has the comments that we want. Close the brackets. Highlight this range that is after the comma and before the other comma. Make it absolute by pressing F4 on the keyboard. So this is how we use VLOOKUP. You press enter, click here and autofill. So those are some of the functions that you need to work out with. Someone might be asked the second highest mark. If you are asked the second highest mark, there you use large, equal signs, large, open brackets, highlight the range, comma, second highest, put two, close the brackets. If you are asked for the, maybe the second lowest, so when I press enter, is 90. That is the largest, the second largest. If I'm asked the second lowest, equal sign is small, open brackets, highlight the range, comma, second, close brackets, second lowest, press enter. Second lowest is that one, 83. So please practice with a number of these functions. Someone would ask how about HLOOKUP. So with HLOOKUP, let's say I want to make remarks here as comments, and I want to use HLOOKUP to bring comments. So here it means that instead of this, that is vertical, I'm not going to make it horizontal. I just copy my table. Somewhere here, I come under paste. I choose this one here, transpose. So it has been transformed into horizontal. So equal signs H lookup. I open brackets. I highlight my my total mark, comma. Then I come and select the range here, comma. Row to row to the one that is having comments. I close the brackets. I highlight this range, and I make it absolute by pressing F4 on the keyboard. I press enter. So when you highlight, it still gives you the same comments. Make sure you highlight your work and then apply grids. Before you print, make sure the work fits on paper and not overflowing. Go to page layout, orientation, landscape. Put your work in landscape. If at all it doesn't fit, make sure you come to page layout page setup, ribbon launcher under page setup, fit to one paper size, F4, 
choose A4, landscape, OK. All this work will fit on a landscape page. So in case one wants to do orientation, here I can highlight this. I right click, format cells. Then I come to alignment, orientation, let's say negative 45. I click OK. So that is how we make our orientations and all that. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. I will produce another video for your question. That is how we have handled Excel. Make sure you keep saving your work as you are working. Then here, electronic database. When it comes to databases, we are looking at a critical skill. The process is obvious. You have to create those database objects you have to do calculated queries calculated forms you have to do different query criteria you have to make you have to change different data types you have to put a primary key at times you have to practice with relationships and how to format different field properties say to put currency symbol to change the date formats to have validation rules and validation text. For example, if I open my database, let's say I've opened access. If I open my access, I create a database. So having created this database, I can choose to import data. So if you don't know how to import, this is how we import go to external data tab here under important link you'll find excel if excel is not here go to new data source from file excel so from here browse look for where your data is it can be in the support files so you look for it and then you import so this one click ok make sure first rows contain column headings is selected click next next then here choose your own primary key for example member id next then give it a name for example members as the name of my table i finish that is the process of importing open your table in design view and do some editing for example date of birth this must be dead stroke time don't forget that total savings instead of number this can be currency, amount, currency, then amount repaid, currency, then loan balance, currency. So please, in case you don't know database very well, check out in the video description. I've, I've included a number of database lessons on how to do all this. So when I save changes and we click yes, you find that these ones have currency. What if you are told to change them into UGX. So go back to design view. For example, here, this one, instead of currency, come here under format, remove currency, open quotes, put UGX, close quotes, space, hash, comma, add more three hashes, or zero, comma, add more three zeros. Save changes. So when you click view, datasheet view, you will find the dollar signs there. Do the same there, do the same there. So those who don't know how to calculate queries, it is very important. For example, you are going to calculate loan balance here by getting total savings. I mean by getting loan amount minus amount repaid. So just create a query. You go to create, query design or query wizard, put all the fields and save your query. I can call it calculated, click OK. So in case you need to see this number very well, check in the video description. I've included the latest database video. It has all you need to know about database. So here we go to Builder and we calculate our loan balance, put colons. We can get loan amount minus amount repaid. So remove the CXPR one, click OK, run your query. So this is a calculated query with wrong
variance. So practice with queries and forms and reports. Check in the video description for all database lessons. Then when it comes to word processing, mail merge, make sure you have practiced mail merge. Make sure you have practiced drop caps, paragraph text, page borders, text highlight, font color, footer or watermark of a specific text. For example, if I'm in word processing, let's say I'm going to generate letters. Let me generate random text. Uh, I, want a, I want three paragraphs, each paragraph with six lines. So this kind of content, let's say you want to do mail merge. You must ensure that the work you are going to do mail merge with is saved in your working folder. So now I have my list in the support files. I go to mailings, select recipients, use existing list. Where is the list? The list is on the desktop in a folder that is support files and it is called acceptance list. From there, I can now put my image fields. I come to insert field, school name, press enter. Next is candidate, press enter. Next, for example, is title. And maybe somewhere here, here, that's where they included another one called fee. So I've included the fee there. We can board it. Then somewhere here, somewhere here, they have also included the last one, Madgeford, as coordinator. So we can highlight this. We also board it. Something like that. You are almost done. So go to preview results. Check. These are our letters. Up here. Next 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 as simple as that that is mail merge there were six letters they keep changing with their information finish and merge here print documents all of them okay so here sorry finish and merge edit individual documents all of them okay so here you have generated your six letters so when you go file print or the six letters will come out. Make sure you have practiced drop caps. For example, a drop cap to five lines. Go to insert, drop cap, drop cap options, dropped five lines, increase them. Click OK. That is a drop cap. Maybe a drop cap of two lines, drop cap options, dropped two lines. Okay, so practice with all these ones. Another one might be asked how to put columns. So highlight your work. You go under page layout, columns. You pick, for example, three columns. If you have been asked a line between, still under columns, more columns, line between, select that. Okay. Then if you are asked things to do with maybe inserting images. So for example, here on page, here you have been told to insert an image. So insert image from your support files. So from desktop, we insert our image from support files. Uh, that kind of image that after inserting this image, you can resize it a bit. Then under wrap text, always practice with these ones, all these ones. Wrap text, for example, we use tight. So when you use tight, it creates space for it. And you are told that let this tree appear to the right. So come to alignment under rotate. You say flip horizontal. The tree changes from left to the right. Then there are other things you need to practice, like putting a watermark to only one page. For example, this is page four. You are told to put a watermark. You go and click in that page four. 
you go to design or page layout depending on your uh, office come to watermark and when you got that watermark just right click any of these so i can right click here and say insert at current document position here i'm trying to insert the watermark only to that page so you hover around that word it will be selected right click add text you can say page uh, page four that is your watermark click outside so that watermark is only to that page four so please in Microsoft Word, practice with all those ones. Mail merge, drop caps, putting columns, inserting images, and all that. Putting page numbers, say in the format of page X of Y, go to insert, page numbers, maybe uh, bottom of page. Then here, under sample, check all through, for example, page X of Y in the center. Ensure you put your headers and footers in your work. So put your headers, even in Excel, put headers and footers and your personal number. So you are done with some practices in Word. More to that, when it comes to presentation and publisher, we are testing almost similar skills. So aim at a professional presentation or publication and avoid noise. Where is noise? Noise is in using poor and uncontrasting background colors. Noise is in selecting poor designs. Using irrelevant clip art, you find that the topic is not matching with the images. Then, avoid overcapitalization, avoid overcrowded content, poor spellings and grammar. So, make choices of fonts that are clear. If you can't make a clear font choice, use the default Calibri or Times New Roman. Practice inserting organizational charts, tables, and even how to link your work. So please, when it comes to PowerPoint, let me open PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, you need to practice how best you can. You need to practice with the following so let me open powerpoint some members maybe don't know how to do importing in powerpoint i want to show you briefly how do you import work from word into powerpoint so you go under new slide you say slides from outline like the way we saw how to import work in database i'm showing you how to import work in uh in PowerPoint. So here, you look for your document that you would like to import. For example, J24 landings, you import it into your presentation. Here it may take, okay, it has appeared. That is how we import. I've said you go to new, new slide, slides from outline, then you get them from your presentation, from your Word document in the support file. So that is how we import. Then from there, in PowerPoint, we need to learn how to put slide designs. So put a slide design of your choice. After putting a slide design of your choice, you need to practice putting transitions, animations, etc. So it is always advisable you use a slide master. So under view, slide master, select slide master. After selecting slide master, you scroll up and select the parent slide here, parent. Then start working, for example, headings, maybe headings, you want them in area black, color red with a shadow and font size maybe 50. Then text here, you want it maybe in Times New Roman and font size maybe 34. Then you want these ones to, be, to have animations, for example, maybe fry in. Then you want headings, for example, to have like grow and turn. Then also practice putting transitions. So you can pick transitions from here. There are a number of transitions. 
if you want for example fry and you'd like to change it to fry in so all those ones are there apply to all here timing increase the timing then uh something else in powerpoint putting uh the details here footers go to insert head and footer slide numbers footer put your names and personal number then you can put data and time you apply to all these are always important then from there you need to practice let's go to slide master close master view at times you are asked to put say charts so here you need to practice putting a chart so you can go under insert chart from chart speak any let's say that one after putting that chart here you put the data given to you you feed here the information to make that chart then at times you are asked to draw organizational charts under insert smart art you can pick hierarchy you for example pick that that is a hierarchy you can reduce it so that it can fit here this one we can delete so that our hierarchy is this one you put the information so you put all the information within your chart and if it is not there please you have to draw and a layout i can use for example title only then here you use shapes to draw those organizational charts for example you draw that then after drawing it i can multiply it hold down control and move so you draw them after drawing you can connect them so you can use the connectors and connect them pick under insert shapes pick arrows for example join that to that then pick lines you draw for example this line you draw a line to connect these two below connect connect them connect them connect them then after right click add text right there what you feel should go there then more to that we always asked to link for example here on this slide go to insert shapes scroll down to action buttons here draw one there after drawing hyperlink to here choose next slide okay go here insert shapes scroll down to hyperlink pick the button draw then next slide yes okay then when you go maybe to the last slide you are told to link it to the first slide go to insert shapes action buttons pick that return you draw there link to you say first slide okay that is linking more to that at times you are asked to put speaker notes slide five here speaker notes you say uh, fishing is key in norway something like that mm -hmm. so that's why you, we put presenter notes or speaker notes then something else in the powerpoint someone would ask how do i loop slides tra to loop transition until e escape loop continuous until escape under slide show set up slide show then you say loop continuous until escape you click ok someone also asked me about setting to be browsed at a kiosk so still under slide show set up then you say browsed at a kiosk full screen mode then you click ok so all those are things you need to work out with when it comes to presentation make sure you utilize support files insert a number of images in the 
support files and ensure that they are well distributed. So go to insert picture support files and get those images and put them there. So there are always images provided to you that match with the support files. So, so far, we have seen almost everything. If you are going to print, you click File, Print. Where you have full slides, click there and choose, for example, six slides horizontal. I can pick like that or I choose Landscape. That's how you choose your, that's how you print your slides. Then, when it comes to publisher, finally with publisher, when it comes to publisher, make sure that you learn how to create uh, publications either from scratch or using templates. So from scratch, you begin by clicking file, print, then you choose, for example, one page per sheet. Then you choose A4. After choosing A4, you go back and start designing. If you want it in landscape, change it to landscape. If you want a different page design, page design, change template, home. If you are going to design brochures, click here. Choose any template you feel you can use for your brochure. So here, I will start creating my brochure using that template. If I'm designing business cards, page design, change template, home, business cards. I choose a template of my choice. In the video description, I have included all video lessons of publisher, creating book covers, business cards, brochures, uh, certificates, uh, creating receipts, all of them have included in the video description. Find them and revise. Under page design, change template, home. Maybe I want to create newsletters. So pick a template of your choice. You apply it and create from there. Page design, change template. Maybe I want to create calendars. Here, pick them. Pick a design of your choice and start creating calendars. Maybe page design, change template, home. Maybe I want to make certificates. So you go there to our certificates. Pick the design of your choice. Apply it and start designing your certificates. So some things that we need to consider while we are designing publisher is that one, can you go to view? Then you go to slide master. And under slide master, this is where you can put your headers and footers. Put your headers, put your headers, put your footer, say 514. Then even in publisher, you need to take care of the design. So under page design, you can format the background you apply a background you can even work on the color schemes here you apply them they are there then still in publisher take care of using these shapes under shapes utilize the number of shapes to have your publication stand out under font sizes utilize different font sizes to have your publication stand out utilize even the spacing of your text to have it stand out. Utilize tables in case you need to use tables. In publisher, one may need how to put a border. So if you want to put a border, you have to still go to view, slide uh, master page. From here, go to insert. You draw like, you draw what we call a text box. After drawing such kind of text box, format it, right click on it, format text box as, so format text box here, after formatting, border art, pick a border, click OK, click OK. Then here, go to master page, 
cross master page. That is how you put a border on your work. Then, more to that, someone in a publisher, you need to practice with drop caps. If you have a text, if you have some text, you need to go under text format. You come to drop caps and apply a number of drop caps from there. So in publisher, we have to be creative and ensure that we fetch max. As I've said, we are looking for professionalism in your publication. So I've hinted on all the numbers. Please, if you have any questions, put them in the comment sections. I'm going to respond to them. So more to that, general tips to handle one practice and avoid cyberphobia use a computer you are familiar with for an exam don't use a laptop for an exam if you have not been practicing with it but for those who have been using those laptops go ahead and use them then even when you know the instructions prior to the exam please read the instructions time yourself each question to take about 35 minutes maximum so read instructions 35 minutes maximum if the paper is saying do three numbers but if the instructions change and they say do all numbers please that means that we use about 20 minutes but please for three numbers 35 minutes maximum more to that take some time read through each question from the entire question paper ensure you don't save shortcuts on your folders and cds ensure before you print the work fits on paper and not overflowing try to understand the requirements of the questions you only impress the examiner by showing the skills asked so now let's look at burning work on cd so we are going to look at burning work on cd burn this folder on the cd so make sure you have a CD R recordable or you have a CD rewritable. So put your CD in the drive. You should be able to see that there is a notification. So here, when you start your CD, put here the title. For example, Agava Peter, Agava Peter 0008. Or if your name is like Kakur Bennett, 007 you find your personal number can't fit so write one name and your personal number peter 007 you have inserted the cd please don't choose this option don't choose usb please choose cd writable because you have inserted the cd then you click next when you click next you can make your screen smaller so make sure your screen is not too big so we can adjust this window so that we are able to see this then we drag and drop i'm saying drag and drop we need to avoid copy and paste for example if i right click copy you may find that because i have exam cyberphobia i right click instead of pasting i click on paste shortcut that is too bad so please it's better you drag and drop it is saying files ready to be written on the disk so right click here and say burn to disk so when you click burn to disk that is your name and personal number click next so your cd will be burnt use a permanent marker to write your name and personal number so write there your names Agava, Agava Peter with a permanent marker and your personal number. After writing on your CD, put it in its jacket. And then after putting it in its jacket, you also uh, put it with your hard copy, the one you printed make sure the two go hand in hand so i'm sure that when you follow all that you stand a chance of scoring highly in your sub ict papers both theory 
and practical. I wish you all the best. So I'm available for teachers who still need me to interact with your learners. Call me for facilitation. My numbers are here. Call me. I come over. I facilitate your learners. We have that kind of interactive session, both paper one, paper two, and paper three. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and always follow. In the video description, I have included all the video lessons of Microsoft Word, video lessons of Excel, video lessons of PowerPoint, video lessons of X of Publisher. All video lessons are within the video description. Check out them. Share this video to everyone who need it. Jabres and success to senior six candidates. I love you all.